Hey guys, welcome to our review of Machin Sentai Kira Major, episode 36 and 37. It'll be right in the title. As always, I'm your host, the Frozen Stratos. Here with me today we have... The Sender Blaze. Hi, I'm Aerosol, and Corey thinks that all children look the same. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do! Uh, but this is not what we're talking about on this episode. On this episode, we're going to be talking about, uh, you know, both of the episodes. We're going to talk about your thoughts, and then we're going to get into... No, we're going to get into our thoughts first. It's fine. I I'm having a time. Um, guys... I thought, rap episode? Oh. And then the, the uh, <laughs> splitting Senna up into five people episode. Oh, good. Oh, very good. Um, let's talk about the, uh, the rap battle first, because, Alex, I know we have very uh, opposing thoughts on that episode. Uh, on the, the rap the one? one? No, the, the rap the one was... One. It, it felt like a little bit of like a letdown, honestly, because I thought it would a be a lot more fun. But um, Drew is kind of like stuck at just like complimenting people during the rap battle, and I think like oh, I I don't even want to say complimenting people. It was just sort of like stating facts and things he knows. <laughs> yeah, like the villains completely crap on him like during the rap battle, which was hilarious. Yeah, um, I thought that like. <laughs> You know, Crunchula actually being able to, like, basically take out all the Cure Majors with just, like, one rap battle, that was pretty on brand. And yeah. I don't know why he didn't just take care of Red right there and then, but, oh, well, we did need to have a second half of the episode. <laughs> and I think the only thing that kind of, like, redeemed it was just, like, that heart-to-heart -heart that Red and uh, Fire had. And then... Like, everyone just kind of, like, dissing on uh, Crunchyroll and the rest of the mm. Jotunheim guys. And, you know, thinking back to it, like, uh, it was, you know, we, he, uh, Red did not do great at all on his own. It was horrible to, to listen to, especially, like, the sort of cadence he was, he was bringing to the table. <laughs> it was just speaking. And then... Uh, when you bring in his friend uh, to bounce off of, sure, the still didn't sound good, but at least what he was saying meant something, and I feel like that really resonated with the, the idea that, like, he works better with the team, he works better, uh, you know, with those he cares about, because it was through the bonds that he formed that he was able to shine um, as well he, as he has been recently. Um and yeah. that sort of highlighted it. Whether the show was was saying that intentionally or not. And I think, you know, on some level it was intentional. Yeah. I think, like, um, another kind of, like, life I had with this episode, which is, like, the plot was so forced. I thought, like, that whole thing with uh, Fire and the rest of the machines just kind of arguing with uh, Drew and the rest of the team, when they were obviously mind-controlled, was, like, a bit much of a stretch. It's like... Like, yeah, you guys were mind control, but, like, you probably were, you know, saying some truth in it anyways. And it's like, do you do realize the Jotunheim Empire is trying to attack Earth, right? Like, <laughs> it, ain't, it ain't just about, like, them dealing with uh, another planet's issues. It's their issue, too, and they're working together. And yeah. I don't think, like, there's really been this sort of animosity between the two of them or, like the Rangers feeling, you know, tired of the machines all too much. Like... Like, I, where did all this stuff come from? Like, geez. <laughs> I don't I don't know that it's necessarily from the perspective you think it's coming from. Because, like, when we actually got to sit down and talk to Fire, um, he was like, yeah, I... he Even he understood that what they were saying was probably amplified. They probably didn't mean it. But it doesn't make it any less true. And maybe they felt guilt for bringing that problem to them. And maybe, hey, uh, potentially it would be better if we weren't in the picture, you know, like to involve ourselves and our problems with you guys. Yeah. Well, that was also partially stemming from his own worries that mm -hmm. they're going to have to eventually uh, separate, right. which I, I like the Sentai approaching that idea of like, hey, eventually this is going to be over and 
we're going to have to go our separate ways. Mm -hmm. Um, this was a weird episode to do that in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, they didn't have, like, the full team to kind of, like, fully go through that process. I know, like, Fire is probably the most, you know, the most vocal about something like that. I think the other uh, machines were kind of, like, roped into, like, their quirky personalities and stuff. You know, like, I don't expect Green to really go into anything this deep. Maybe, like, at the very <laughs> end when he's, like, separating from Senna, he would probably go into it a little bit. But mm -hmm. it was a little bit weird. But, I don't know, like... The Crystallia and Earth are already kind of like they've been intertwined for a while, like ever since mm -hmm. Oridan came to Earth, you know, how many years ago. So it doesn't seem like they'll be like fully separated. It'll be like an end of the journey, but I think they'll still be like friends and whatnot. Like yeah. it didn't seem like that was going to be a, like a major thing. So it felt like they did kind of like force it for like the end or. Mm -hmm. The yeah. the ending for this episode, but I don't know, like it wasn't I think like the ending made up for whatever contrivances they had to do at the very sure. beginning. So I was okay with it overall. I I think you know, as we you know, the audience are moving into the end of Kira Major, we're gonna have to come to terms with the end of the show. And I feel like maybe on some level it's priming the kids to be like, Hey, you know, this is going to be over eventually. <laughs> you might want to think about that or something. I don't know. <laughs> Do the kids really care that much? Are they buying the toys? <laughs> like they were ordered to? <laughs> like they were ordered to. Multiple times. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I. Yeah, I, I'd say it was... Yeah, it, um... It really did not shine as much, considering, in my opinion, we had such a good episode, like, right after. So, like, I wasn't done processing the, the stuff from the rap battle, and then, oh, shoot, this episode, really good. Um, yeah, we, we, we move on? Sure. I, sure. Oh. Oh, Actually, okay. I don't see have something to say, because, like... I, no, I was just going to say, we still got some, like, funny moments here and there. Like, it wasn't yeah. a total flop of an episode. Yeah, I do yeah. think, like, as far as, like, a fine episode goes, it's mm -hmm. maybe on the lower end of the scale. Sure, sure. <laughs> I, I but... do also want to mention that, like, hey, uh, any subgroup that had to subtitle some uh, rap lyrics and or interpret them, good job. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm. I'm sure it was a lot of hard work. Um, thank you for solving it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I kind of wish it went like full stupid with this episode instead of just like wrapping in all that emotional stuff at the end. Like, geez, I think that's where like this episode kind of became meh for me because they weren't like committing to either route. Because like them having a rap battle would have been hilarious. Like Yodona's like get up was just like. <laughs> If they don't sell a figure for that, then they're they're missing out. <laughs> well, they are. <laughs> are you serious? They are, no, they are missing out. They are not selling uh, the figure. Oh, uh, I was just uh, like, you make yeah, that limited bad. edition, hundred bucks a pop. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. uh, let's move on into this next episode that I deeply enjoyed. Um, deeply. Well, it it was good. It was a. Uh, an interesting look at a character that, you know, we we don't typically get to see in the forefront often. Like, you know, it's been it's been team episodes recently. Um, so she hasn't really had a chance to shine and her actress was doing really well this episode and pulling a lot of the weight. Uh Senna's actress. Yeah. Um, um yeah. She, like personally like this. I didn't like this episode all too much, but I will say that Senna's performance was pretty good this episode, as was Pink's. I felt like their dynamic is, like, pretty good. I really mm -hmm. like that whole, like, besties kind of, you know, interaction they have with, like, Pink kind of being not, like, a mother figure, but, like, a, like an older sister figure. Sure, like, they, sure. like, they yeah. nailed that pretty well without being, like, a really, you know, like, set in stone, like, yeah. them kind of like pushing it out in front of you just like these small little moments here and there 
that it kind of sprinkled throughout. And I don't know, like it, it, it definitely like worked towards like the mm-hmm. latter half of this episode. And you know, whether it is to the the detriment of the show or not, like she was the one to recognize that all parts of Senna are you know valid and necessary. Yeah. Um, and She's I like... <laughs> I I liked the notion that um you know you have to or you know it's good to accept all parts of yourself um rather than trying to to hide away or get rid of parts of yourself that you don't like because it's every single part of you that makes you who you are. And I thought that was a, a very nice message. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I, uh, I mean, I I will say that I do agree in that sense. Um, I I uh, viewed the the sad set of the sort of like anxious one um, as just a representation of her anxiety. We we discussed this a lot after the yeah episode we did, um, <laughs> and. It, it was clear that the other four were like more more in line with who she actually like displays herself as throughout sure. the course of the show but um I do like that they showed that like even even Senna who doesn't seem like a worry war at all does have mm-hmm. some amount of anxiety to her right and it is anxiety is important Mm -hmm. not necessarily important but it isn't like a big scary thing uh it can feel like that but it's uh yeah the way the way way i was taught (laughs) when i was going through like counseling courses and stuff Mm -hmm. is that anxiety is just your body's natural response to things and it's kind of necessary you know mm. it's that fight or flight feeling yeah. that you get and uh sometimes you need it and i i like the show being like yeah uh it may seem like you're better off without it but you're just kind of leaving yourself open to mistakes and mm-hmm. being reckless and not thinking ahead yeah and like i i did appreciate the fact that even though you know her more analytical side was was um absorbed in reabsorbed in um you know that that crucial moment where it was necessary to 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 think um that didn't kick in because she did not give herself like the more dominant parts of her personality were not given uh giving the rest of the body or the rest of her mind a chance to think and i feel like it's it's the anxiousness it's the hesitancy that leads to you know reflection and being able to to process the the information so whether or not you do have your analytical side it doesn't matter if you don't have like you know if you don't give yourself time to process it yeah because she didn't consider that the the car was even an issue yeah no nobody does (laughs) <laughs> there right. it is all right, all right let's unleash the ox i let you talk your bullshit for the longest time oh uh, come on so... <laughs> like i felt like this would have worked with like uh, any other like ranger like a little bit better because like that whole um cautious side of senna is something that we don't ever see like ever being a thing um so when it was like actually like shown as like being part of her, it, it didn't like make much sense for me but like your guys's explanation kind of like made me like a bit more like accepting of it. it's like definitely someone that gets bullied in personality someone that they never really let you know any like spotlight to um i do think that like the anxiety part of her is something that i would be like um more willing to accept because she is like an athlete and you do kind of like feel like a lot of stress um in like that regard so mm-hmm. kind of like that you know anxious feeling like oh will i be able to like make my times and stuff like that we'll be able to like perform in this like tournament like 
those types of doubts um, I see being a bit more like realistic for a character. But I've seen like this character just kind of like run in danger so many times that I'm just like, is there really a cautious side to her? <laughs> like, I don't. I just like whatever. But the the really thing that kind of like killed it for me this episode was the reason that cautious side was like needed was for something so dumb. Like a car in the middle of a megastar fight, yo, that city should have been evacuated the entire <laughs> way. Like, there's no way that like those machines, just like even like moving around, wouldn't kill her or kill that family. It's just what? it's something that like nobody would even think of. You like you think like the the rangers are like actually looking at those little like ants beneath them to make sure that they don't step on them. <laughs> Like, obviously, they they don't. They've, like, shot, like, fucking giant-ass lasers that have, you know, blown up portions of the city. Like, they, they don't care. They don't, like, who, who went I mean, over to the buildings to check if people were inside before they crashed into them? Like, nobody does. <laughs> <laughs> but like, at least it, was, it wouldn't be their fault, you know, like, if they crashed was, right into it. It feels like a trap that the monster itself was laying and not just something, you know, trivial, like a car, like, in the middle of the city, I think it would have made a lot more sense and maybe not so picky on that one aspect of this episode. <laughs> like, I gotta be honest, it's not really that big of an issue to me, mostly because, like, you know, you know me, I like, I like enjoying, just, I like enjoying the episodes, and it was that one little thing for me that that was like oh ha ha now they now they're relevant that's kind of funny it wasn't like the thing that that sort of broke it for me because the rest of the episode like um was set up to give us a really powerful emotional moment uh between green and pink and then like you know for it's... as as kitty as sentai is they happen to do a lot of suicide stuff suicide adjacent things especially ryu soldier I... oh yeah like... that dumb part of the episode why didn't they just absorb number five when she was right there like jesus why would you let her go <laughs> <laughs> like they like collectively lost their freaking like brains or something because just put them all together they've already like established that they aren't as strong when they're split up together they're like each fifth of a power like who cares if like you just take parts of her personality and maybe she's a bit more enjoyable put them all together you need all that strength for this giant fight i i feel like that like, was more an issue of like i don't know blocking the scene rather than like because immediately after they're like oh shoot we gotta do a fight thing Let's go do that. We're going to deal with the Senna thing later. Um, and then, I don't know. This this episode really took a lot of cues from uh, Inside Out. <laughs> I'm, I'm suddenly noticing. Because, like, there was the moment of... Oh, spoilers for Inside Out. But didn't Sadness just be like, Ah, she probably doesn't need me. I'm just going to disappear. Right? Sure. I just Did remember no that like else watch thing. Inside Out. Dude, that, I just, it was such a long time ago since I've seen that movie. I remember like that pink elephant thing dying, but that's about it. Well, another spoiler for Inside Out. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I I enjoyed this episode a lot. There was some really raw emotion, and not something we typically get to see with these characters. And it was a lot of fun just to dissect, um, you know. What makes Senna Senna? And, you know, it, it it fleshes out her as, like, you know, a person rather than just a one-note character. Yo, guess, like... guess what? What? Yodona's actually the Yodonai member. Oh, yeah! Yeah, that, <laughs> that did happen. They did hit us up with that in this episode. Yeah. <laughs> I... That... That was also a bit much. <laughs> it was. It, I love how like she was on, she was on the set. She started turning into the monster. The monster decimated, like leveled the city, and then she turned back into her small size and was like in a very 
clean set, like, <laughs> as if nothing had happened. They didn't move her over to, like, the quarry like they did with Ryu Soldier when everything was leveled. Um, strange. But, outside of that, uh, an interesting way to go. I do wonder what the, you know, the other head panel is. Um... I wonder if that's, like, a ground form. Like, ground level form. Oh, yeah, yeah. So we can get, like, a ground level fight and big monster fight. You know what I mean? I mean, you know, I I guess... I guess if if the red one's the ground type, she is technically the air type because she's a bird. Was it thinking elements? (laughs) But sure. (laughs) Fucking air type. (laughs) Oh, flying type, excuse me. Um, They're birds, too. Air type. Does she look like a gas? <laughs> Alright, we're, we're out of here. All right, no, we're not. No, we're not. No <laughs> comments, you asshole. He's so, he's so ready to be done. Yeah, I know, yeah. Alright, uh, our first comment comes from K. John, who says, Wow. What a nice surprise that you guys are reacting to two episodes back to back. We we went, we almost didn't. Uh, we we almost had two separate episodes, but you know this makes more sense. Here's some quick thoughts from me. Uh, the rap episode was fun. It was not the best, but still fun to watch. The rap battle and the full team roll call scene is absolutely fantastic. Love it. The conversation between Judah and Fire at the end makes me feel like there will be a tragedy coming soon. Maybe all the Martians will be destroyed by Yoron Emperor or something like that. I mean, that would be dark. Yeah, they're like destroying the machines. You know, cra- making them all cracked up and stuff. Yeah, sometimes. I mean, they've only done it like a handful of times, I'd say. Yeah, that, that's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> they do it twice, that's a lot. <laughs> Out of out of forty five ish episodes, two is a lot. Yeah, because if it do it like three or four times, then that's a bit excessive. <laughs> you know, like you can't just be destroying all your swords every other episode. Like, why would kids buy know... them if they break so easily? I do not know what <laughs> metric you're going off of, but okay. Uh, hey, future Cory here. Uh, so YouTube screwed up and just didn't show me the rest of that comment. Uh, but I do have it right here. Uh, we also had a bunch of late comments and uh, 10 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, guys. But this is a special occasion. It's the end of the new year. I just wanted to make sure everyone got their stuff in. Uh, you know, just so everyone had uh, was able to chime in. Anyway, uh, K. John goes on to say about this week's episode. Oh, well, maybe I should show you the comment. Uh, about this week's episode. Senna's acting was incredible. You can really feel depression from her eyes' expressions. So, the Emperor's here. I'm still confused whether he's been living inside Yodama's body, or is she just an alternative form of him, but has no memories for some reason. I really hope the Emperor is just living inside Yodana so that she can be her own character and break free from the Emperor later. Kira Major ends 2020 on a very high note, and I can't wait for the final arc in 2021. I'm going to miss this show a lot when it's over. Anyway, happy holidays to you guys. Hope you had a have a meaningful New Year break, uh, and see you again in 2021. Thank you so much, uh, K. John, for that. Um, and yeah, I, uh, I don't know that that actress would, you know, they would leave that actress on the table, like not do anything with her. Um, you know, outside of this, uh, it'd be interesting to see her break away from that because you know she is like a separate personality situation. Um, so yeah, thank you so much. And like I said, we have some late comments. Um, once again, we don't typically do these pickup shots, but uh, these seemed important enough, uh, and they come from Dustin Smith who says, okay, before I talk about these two episodes, I have some important news to drop. My laptop's dying on me. Um, uh, and it, you know, anything he does doesn't seem to work. So it, this may be one of his final comments for the Sentai watch alongs, uh, until they can get it fixed. So, you know, I just wanted to make sure to get their final comments in because, you know, your input, ma- input matters. Um, let's see. Uh, First, with episode 36, Hot Diggity Dog. This was an amusing episode. First of all, I like being able to see more of 
uh, Crystalia's culture and seeing what their vision of Christmas, Chris, Crystalimus, the season of gratitude. If there was one little nitpick I have with this episode, I believe doing a, an a oh no, are the Martians and Kira Major going to split up type of episode while we are so close to the end arc. Kira Major seemed seem arc seems too little too late in my opinion but i'd say they handled it okay enough i did like the rap battle with judah and fire that was funny speaking of rap who knew crunchula could lay down the rap chops rap chops is that what people say i don't know that that's what people say uh his plan was all right it did tie the crystal miss uh theme nicely and the rap battle with crunchula and Juru was a fun time, although I don't know where they got Japanese Eminem guy from. Maybe he was a rapper that was hit with Crunchula's disc spell. Uh, also, second, Gomuryu Marsk Beast, uh, this time combined with DJ with a DJ turntable. Neat. Um, so yeah, uh, speaking to that, uh, I... You know, I said it in the episode, but I, I still really like, you know, that sort of hesitancy and having that guilt sort of set in, especially since they've been working at it for so long. You only get, you know, the feeling of, oh, no, like the the uh, the crystals being like, oh, no, uh, we've taken a lot from them and they sacrifice a lot specifically with, you know, their their jobs and or their hobbies. Um, in order to make the Kira Majors work, and you only get that if they've been with them for so long. Like, you, you, you know, you see them, um, grappling with the time they've had to spend with them, even if, you know, uh, it, it soured this episode just, uh, or their relationships had soured that episode specifically because, um, of that spell, but, you know, it didn't make the guilt any less real to them, um, so I think uh, now was a good enough time for that. And like I said, uh, it's priming the kids to maybe lose Kira Major soon. Uh, anyway, uh, Dustin Smith goes on to say, uh, Now for episode 37, not as funny as the last episode for me, but ultimately it was a decent start to the nearing finale arc. Uh, first of all, Crunchyl is not dead, which first of all, I should have saw that one coming because there's still at least three masks confirmed for the final set of episodes and seems quite clear at this point and he's the only one that can make them so when he does actually die no more marskmen or marsk beasts and it defiantly seems like his ending arc is coming because with yodana using her whip on him and we are very much aware of the established side effect of her with her whip. It's interesting because, like, I thought, you know, going into the episode, uh, Senna might have have, you know, she got whipped and could have died, like, could have exploded because of that since they're overloaded. But um, Yodana had set the dial to you know, splitting them, and I don't think splitting them overcharges them, it just sort of splits their essence, and maybe, like, you know, each of them are one-fifth of, of a whole, so they are lesser instead of, you know, being super juiced up and stuff. Anyway, um, and knowing that, I can't help but be a bit scared for Senna's future since she got hit with a whip, or maybe the side effect doesn't affect Earthlings like it does Jotunheim members, I don't know. The different Senna's was quite interesting, especially with all her personalities aren't in her there's numbers on top of her helmet to indicate she's not whole yet. I'm not gonna lie, with the Misao Mondo-esque Senna going to that beach... I, for some reason, interpreted that she was going to drown herself to death in that one. Yeah, that is that is exactly what it is. Um, I know that sounds dark, but I guess it has something to do with Miso Mando Sen... Who is that? Are you talking about Miso from Juoja? Uh How she was acting that made me think that... Yeah, no, that is exactly it. That is the subtext that you were supposed to to pick up on uh with that show like for whatever reason sentai deals with suicide a lot uh <laughs> and i don't know why um let's see uh also emperor yodan is yodana so he's basically like kitsune's 
or in some anime where regardless, or regardless of say Kitsune's gender, they have young adult woman as their human form. Well, it's good to finally have him in the picture. Next episode, Takamichi and Garza have a duel as the other Kira Majors deal with a toothy mask. That's face reminds me of that butt monster from that animated movie, Pink Floyd's The Wall. I want to thank you, Go Mango, for responding to my comments, and I was happy to share my thoughts on these episodes with you. Have a happy New Year's, and stay awesome. Uh, thank you so much, Dustin Smith. Uh, like I said, we don't do these pickup shots often, but uh, I had screwed up enough, and there were enough, uh, you know, uh, late comments uh, to, to warrant this, but... Please keep in mind, 10 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, the day that the watch-along goes up. That is the deadline from now on. We we won't do these just because, like, I don't I don't have the time, typically, to, to make these happen. So please, 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 if you don't want your comment missed, 10 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Anyway, uh, let's head back into the episode. Uh, let's move into this next comment. Uh, from Double the Unknown, who says, There's only seven or eight more episodes left. Uh, uh, eight more episodes, but even if the story doesn't really lead anywhere, I think I'll look back on the, at this show fondly. It has been fun, and the characters are all pretty memorable. I just hope the story has that Shinkenger-level plot twist left in it to push the show into, a ca into the category of one of Sentai's best works. Um, it, you know, I, I've been thinking a lot uh recently just because someone said it on friday or someone said it at some point and it stuck with me uh that like this like kira major is more of a a toei centered um venture and uh uh the next show uh zenkaiger that one's gonna be more of a bandai centric uh sort of venture and it really shows that, you know, we are putting character work first. We are putting story first outside of toy sales and whatnot. And I, I do appreciate that. And it's really showing. Um, you know, it'd be nice, bro. Both of them working on the same damn show. <laughs> you know, it would be nice I, to have a I would love yeah. it if Kira Major had good toys. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, don't get me wrong. I think. The toys are neat outside looking in. I certainly would like to own them, but there aren't a lot of them. Yeah, but they don't fit together. You're right. Well, you can you can sit down one of them and you could plop a... Uh, uh, you can glue them back to back. <laughs> you could do that, Yo, yeah. Bandai working overtime on Saber, though? Like, they're pumping out new shit every other week. I... Look, they only have enough bandwidth to do that once a... <laughs> once per show. Uh, if they're working on one, they probably can't do the other. I don't know. Either way, uh, yeah, good episode. Thank you, guys, so much for the comments. Uh, and thank you so much for watching. If you like this episode, hit the like button and subscribe if you want to hear more from us each week. Like a lot of you already have, because we are two subscribers away from 900. We don't quite know what we're going to be doing to celebrate the 900 yet, but Alex and I are working on or, and or thinking of uh, some things to do for 900 and or for the rest of this channel. Um, yeah. The first step is getting rid of Aerosol. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. He found out. Um, but, <laughs> but yeah, uh, we're going to be doing a, um, a channel update very soon, so make sure to keep your eyes peeled for that. Outside of that, there are still links in the description down below to how you can help support the Black Lives Matter movement by donating money, signing petitions, and watching videos. Thank you so much for watching. Keep it. Yeah, see ya. Bye. Alright, you're fired. Cool. <laughs> so, so all I gotta talk about is that then? <laughs> Actually, oh, wait. Yeah, you're still under contract for Zed. Yeah, you can only avoid that one for so long. I know. Yeah. <laughs>